It's been a long time since we've done a Porsche on test drive, and that's primarily because it's been a long time since Porsche's had what I would call a new model. Well, that all changes this week as we take a look at the Cayman. <laughs> When you test a true sports car, it's best to jump in with both feet and speak one's mind up front. Simply stated, the Boxster base Cayman is one heck of a good set of wheels. It's stylish, blending the best of the 911 and Boxster lines in a well-proportioned body. It's also incredibly well-balanced. Take a very stiff chassis, a dialed-in suspension and a great set of Michelin tires, and you have a pylon demon. Welcome to the Porsche Cayman. This thing is as fast through the pylons as anything I've ever driven. You want to talk about having fun when you're getting paid? Combining a rock solid chassis with large P235 40ZR18 front and 265 40ZR18 rear tires, Porsche's stability management control system and a delightful suspension and the Cayman's handling is tenacious to the point where it tests the driver's nerve. It also remains flatter than gravy on a plate when pressed through the pylons. It's the type of handling and comportment competing manufacturers can only dream about. Thankfully, well, I experienced it firsthand, and I managed to keep my life and license. Right about now, we'd be showing you a pretty picture of the engine. Unfortunately, on this Cayman, well, it resides right under here, and so there's nothing to see. That mid-engine placement also explains a couple other things. To begin with, that's why there's no back seat, and it also explains why the trunk at the back end is virtually useless. The saving grace, however, when you come up front, you'll find a second trunk. Now, this one is large enough to hold a couple of good-sized duffel bags, which is plenty for that weekend away. The 2.7-litre flat six that powers the base Cayman combines variable valve lift with the variable valve timing on the intake cam. And this is Vario Cam Plus in Porsche speak. Switching to the high lift cam load as the engine loads increase helps it breathe more freely. It also means a peak output of 245 horsepower and 201 pound-feet of torque anywhere between 4,600 and 6,000 RPM. This is enough oomph to get the Cayman to 100k in 6 seconds, which is fast enough to be entertaining. It also boasts a raspy exhaust note that begs the driver to keep the hammer down. More impressive, however, is the average fuel economy the Cayman returned during the test. Try 10.7 litres per 100 kilometres on for size. When you get behind the wheel of the Cayman, it becomes immediately obvious that this car is all about the driver. The seats hug without being confining, and you can adjust the steering wheel so it's in the perfect position. Then you get to the center stack. Now, the buttons on this thing are so small that when you're going quickly, which is something this car does exceptionally well, you have to look down at the radio or the climate controls, which is not what you should be doing. Then you get to these. Now these prized puppies, what a worthless piece of engineering. You stick your double latte in there and it's going to end up all over your girlfriend's lap. And while I'm on the subject of that, if you wear a kilt, don't, because you'll frighten the world to death every time you get out of the car. The downfall with the base Cayman is its five-speed manual box. While it does work very well with the engine, it makes the Cayman sound and feel too busy at highway speeds. 120k comes at 3,000 plus RPM. Now, when you're preoccupied with an enthusiastic drive, this is not a problem. On a long run, where the speeds are pedestrian, well, the engine's drone gets rather monotonous in a hurry. Besides, you can get a six-speed box in a $29,000 Hyundai Tiburon. Please! As far as I'm concerned, this Cayman is the best Porsche to date, and for two important reasons. First of all, it's remarkably easy to drive about town even though it is a thoroughbred, and secondly, in anything other than a straight line drag, it will give a 911 a serious run for its money. That, of course, begs the question, why would you buy a 911? The short answer, you don't. You leave the 911 to those guys that have got the fat wallets, or the unfortunate few that need that, well, let's just say male enhancement.
So here's the question, where were you 32 years ago? I know some of you weren't even a glint in your father's eye. As for me, well, I was in diapers, but found time to get motoring TV off the ground. And today I like to think we've got one of the best automotive video libraries in the world. If you agree, please give us the thumbs up and also subscribe. We really appreciate it.